Community Cats podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats podcast. I'm your host, Stacey LeBaron. I have been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. Today, we're speaking with Nikki Martinez. Nikki works in feline welfare and rescue in Las Vegas, Nevada. She's the foster mom behind At My Foster Kittens on Instagram and the founder of Fostering a Purpose, a company with the purpose of giving back to animal welfare organizations. Nikki has fostered hundreds of cats and kittens and specializes in caring for critical care and neonatal kittens. Nikki serves on the board of directors for C5 in Las Vegas, is an active TNR, trap new to return trapper, who is making an effort to reduce the feral cat population. Her work with C5 helps to prevent unnecessary euthanasia of healthy, feral, and free-roaming cats by providing trap, neuter, and return programs to the community. She is committed to teaching and guiding others to do the same in their community. Nikki, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. And uh, so, folks, I apologize if you hear some scratching in the background. That was my cat, Misha, who seems to want to join in on the conversation this evening. <laughs> so uh, so we, we, it's a party of three tonight. So, well, Nikki, tell me a little bit about how did you get the passion for cats and, and involved in working in animal welfare? It's so funny because I was a dog person, never owned a cat until I was 31. Um, I had to have a radical abdominal hysterectomy, which put me on bed rest for several months. And once I was permitted to start driving again by my doctor, I was actually on my way to a doctor appointment and a kitten ran in front of my car and I stopped and had no idea what I was going to do with this kitten or how I was going to get it to come to me. In fact, I called it over like a dog. I patted my my knees and said, come here, come here, you know, (laughs) and the kitten came to me. So put her in my car and proceeded to the doctor appointment. Thankfully, the weather was nice. So she stayed in there. I had no idea what I was going to do with her since I had never had a cat before and ended up taking her to a local vet office. They told me that they were going to treat her for her respiratory infection and get her into a rescue. Uh, I thought I had been doing a good thing. I thought that was great. I saved a life off the street and that was it. Well, I called my husband at work and told him what had happened. And he said, why don't you call the vet and ask them if you can transfer the kitten yourself to a no-kill rescue? I have a feeling they're going to take it to the municipal shelter where she would be at risk of euthanasia. So I called them probably about 30 minutes after I dropped her off and they said, oh, that kitten you dropped off? Yeah, we called animal control and they picked her up and she's on her way to the municipal shelter. So my husband told me, go down to the municipal shelter, pay the fee and get her out of there. So I paid $50, brought her home, got her to another vet, treated her. This was so healing for me to have this kitten that I was caring for. I was so focused on myself and my own medical issue and I was depressed, you know, the whole thing with having a major surgery, that it was so nice to have this little kitten to care for that I could focus on, that I didn't think about myself. So nursed her back to health, got her spayed, and she got adopted. And that just sparked the beginning of all of this. I went into my local SPCA afterwards and said, I'd like to foster a kitten. Well, I didn't know that I was walking in during kitten season. I didn't even know there was a kitten season. I had no idea how overwhelmed shelters and rescues were during the warm spring and summer months. So I asked them if I could fill out an application to foster, and they handed me a box with a pregnant cat. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was your application. I had no idea what I was doing. They were just putting out fires. You can tell they were stressed and overwhelmed, and they were so glad that somebody was there to foster. And that's really how I started fostering. Um, since then, there have been hundreds of cats and kittens that I fostered over the years. I loved it. I still love it. I still do it. But eventually that got me into TNR. So that's how it began. That's how it all began. So the first phase was the passion and the love with regards to the kittens. But then there was the understanding that the TNR was very helpful in obviously reducing those numbers of kittens that are out there. 
Right. I knew that I came, came to quickly understand that kitten season was a thing. Like I said I had earlier that I had no idea that kitten season was what it was or that it was a thing. So I figured that out quickly. I knew that shelters and rescues were busy with kittens coming in through the doors starting in spring and summer. Uh, the warm summer months. And I never really put the connection together, TNR and foster connection together until a friend of mine called me one summer and said, hey, we have these kittens that showed up at my place of employment. Um, Their mother doesn't seem to be around and they've been crying outside. So I went and picked them up, bottle fed them, got them spayed and neutered and adopted out. The next year, he called me again and said, hey, we have more kittens outside at my work. And I thought, they look exactly like the kittens that were born last year. This can't happen again. These, This cannot happen again. So I called around and found an organization that would loan me a trap. And I'd never trapped cats before, but I knew that mother had to be spayed. And I went and trapped and spayed her, plus a few other cats that were on the property of my friend's work. And that I put the connection together between fostering, but more importantly, the importance of trap, neuter, return. You can see that shelters and rescues are completely overwhelmed during kitten season because of the kittens and cats coming in the door. Uh, Municipal shelters can't turn any animals away, and then their space gets limited as to how many animals they can accept, so they resort to euthanasia to make room for more cats and kittens coming in the door. So once I started to make those connections, I really started to put my interest into TNR because I picture like a bucket that's overflowing with water. Maybe it has a hole in it and the water's gushing out. You can either mop up the water or you can put a plug in the hole. And TNR really puts the plug in the hole and stops these cats from breeding on the street, which ultimately stops kittens being born outside and suffering. So that's where my passion lies. Um, The organization that lent me the trap is called C5 here in Las Vegas. uh, And I signed on to be a volunteer trapper with them. That was several years ago. And I love it. I I absolutely love it. it. It's such a satisfying feeling to know that these colonies of cats won't be breeding anymore. Keith Williams, who's one of the founders of C5, says it turns them into a retirement community of cats, which is fantastic. (laughs) And that's what we really do is we trap, neuter, return the entire colony so that way they aren't producing kittens anymore. Less kittens born on the streets means less kittens entering the shelter. Less kittens born on the streets means less kittens dying outside. And they truly suffer before they die outside. And most people don't realize that between weather elements, car traffic, animal predators, human predators, disease, the kittens that are born outside truly suffer before they usually die. So TNR stops that, trapping the the adult cats. As a trapper, I have to ask a few key questions. Sure. So are you a box trap or drop trapper? What's your (laughs) trap of choice? I like both. Actually, I personally start with the box traps first. We use the true catch trap. Thankfully, like I said, I I volunteer with an organization called C5. So they loan us all of our traps, which is really fantastic. We did invest in our own drop trap. And for the scragglers that are hanging around or the ones that we have a hard time catching, we use a drop trap. But I do use both of them. Do you use any cameras for monitoring the areas or what are your tricks to start assess the situation? So last year, my husband's the techie guy. (laughs) And last year we invested in a snake camera, kind of like what a plumber uses and got a snake camera so that we, we can see and it has a light on it. We can see inside small areas or maybe underneath buildings. Um, we don't want to leave any cats or kittens behind when we're trapping. So that's been helpful. We just got that last kitten season. I'd love a drone. <laughs> I, I think that would be so, you know, like a lot of girls dream about purses or shoes or makeup. And I dream about kitten and cat things like a drone to go on my TNR jobs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite? favorite bait? 
Ooh, so I just, I like using just regular stinky wet cat food, but I will switch it up. Sardines are okay, but when I really want to pull out the big guns, I go to Kentucky Fried Chicken and I get the Colonel's original recipe and it usually works every time to get those hard to catch cat. So fried chicken, I'll bring it out. Are you in a uh, situation where you're able to do mass trapping and do you prefer doing mass trapping versus like the onesie twosie type situation? You know, I'll get them all. So this last October, I did a 69 cat job in a hoarding situation. C5 is the organization I work with and I'm on the board of directors with. And our motto is we trap colonies, not cats. So we don't go out and look for crack cats and get as many as we can. We actually work directly with colony caretakers. So those who are feeding the cats at a location and working with the caretaker allows us to not only do we build a direct relationship with them in the community, but they can help us by pulling up the food and not feeding so we can get the entire colony of cats. It's almost pointless to get just a few cats in the colony. We'll be just putting healthy cats back into an existing colony and then the problem continues. So our goal is to trap the entire colony of cats and then Now that we have that direct relationship with the colony caretaker, the person who's feeding them, they have my number. And if a cat shows up new to the colony, I can go back out there and trap the cat and again, have that maintained neutered colony, which is really nice. Today's episode is sponsored by Space Kitty Express, your one-stop shop for exotic cat drugs. Everyone's heard of catnip, but what about valerian root, tatarian honeysuckle, or silver vine? Space Kitty Express specializes in offering these hard-to-find catnip alternatives, both in their herbal form and stuffed into a variety of reusable toys. Their herbs are 100% pure, not like those quote-unquote catnip blends you might find in a pet store. Their tartarian honeysuckle wood is cut fresh and kept frozen to lock in its citrusy scent. Their silver vine exudes a mintiness that tingles the nostrils. Their organic valerian root is so musky that they've had to blend it with organic lemongrass so that human noses can tolerate it. Cats can definitely tell the difference between these quality herbs and that stale catnip from the big box store. Visit SpaceKittyExpress.com and watch videos from satisfied feline customers. Use coupon code COMMUNITYCATS, all one word, at checkout to receive 10% off your purchase. That's SpaceKittyExpress.com with coupon code COMMUNITYCATS. Doesn't your cat deserve the best? Spoil them today at SpaceKittyExpress.com. Catalogical exists to help cat parents love their kitties better with the most in-depth cat food reviews online, plus hundreds of other fact-based articles. Catalogical is your one-stop shop when it comes to learning more about your cat. Catalogical works with multiple retail partners to provide custom coupons on everything from automatic litter boxes to microbiome testing, so you're also likely to save when you choose one of their recommended products. So, Nikki, uh, one question I have, and this is a question I get from a lot of folks that are out there trapping cats. How do you handle an injured feral cat? That's a good question. So we trap the entire colony. Uh, We find that most males, especially in spring and summer, uh, the times that they're mating, um, will come in with some kind of injury. They'll have gashes in their neck. Oftentimes they're infected from fighting. They got all that testosterone running through them and they're fighting. So most of them have some kind of injury. What we do with C5 is we not only get them neutered and ear tipped, but they're also vaccinated, a three-in-one vaccine, a rabies vaccine, and then their wounds are cleaned as well. So any cat that comes our way that has an injury gets medical treatment as well, which is fantastic. We put them back at their colony site in a better position than when we trap them. That's our goal. Has there ever been a cat you couldn't trap? Um, (laughs) it's rare. Honestly, it's rare because we will stay there sometimes weeks or longer and get the last cat in the colony. And working with the colony caretaker is fantastic because we can tell them when to pull up the food and to not feed and we can keep in communication with them so we can get every cat. We had one, I actually wrote a blog about it. Um, It was C5's Most Wanted. She was a female that kept popping out babies. We couldn't get her. We couldn't get her. 
And this is where working with the colony caretaker was fantastic because, I mean, I, I work, I foster, I can't be there 24-7 to catch this cat. But the caretaker who happened to be on his property, he's there. So what I do is I like to not only have that relationship with the caretaker, but get them active and involved in trapping as well. And she kept coming onto his porch. I said, do you have like a big dog kennel? And he, he did. He had two big dog kennels because he has two big dogs in his house. We put one on the porch and he, I said, go ahead and start feeding her inside of there. So she's used to eating inside there. Well, one day he saw her in there and pushed her butt in and closed the door and called me. (laughs) It was kind of a trick to get her from the large dog kennel. He said, how are you going to get her from this large dog kennel into a trap? I thought, I don't know. I'll figure it out somehow. But we're not letting her breed anymore. Uh, We used a broomstick and my husband and I kind of finagled her into this uh, trap and got her in and got her spayed. So she was a tough one to catch, but we make sure to get them all. And even with the, you could use a squeeze trap, even maybe get that in the dog crate too. Those are much more handleable to work with. But yeah, sometimes you kind of have to do what you need to do in order to get them. And that feeling of getting that last cat is definitely a feeling of celebration. Oh, it's fantastic. And you know what the best part about it is her kittens, the litters that she was popping out, that she lived near a busy road. And so sadly, the kittens were being killed by cars. And I'm a foster. So I take care of these neonatal and critical care kittens. And that just killed me to think of these babies playing in the road and getting hit by a car. So the fact that she's spayed and will never have a litter of kittens that will die is such a great feeling. Let's talk a bit about your Instagram account at my foster kittens. When did you start that? So I started it about, uh, let's see, four or five years ago. I think my family and friends got really tired of seeing my foster kittens posted on my personal page (laughs) and they were making fun of me. So my sister said, well, why don't you start another account just to put pictures of your foster kittens on? I used to keep them in a book, pictures of the fosters, and then that got filled up. And so I started putting them Instagram and then they, they were getting annoyed. So I started my own Instagram account for my fosters, just thinking I was going to use it as an online photo album. Well, it kind of blew up, Mm -hmm. which is great. And now I'm able to use it as a tool. Uh, What I think of is, hey, there's this adorable picture of a kitten. You can't help but love it. And in my caption underneath, I'm going to give you something educational. So that's how it kind of started. Hook them in, those who are followers, by an adorable video or or a cute picture of kittens. And then I tell them the truth is that they may be adorable, but did you know, did you know, for example, 2,300 cats and kittens are euthanized in municipal shelters every day in the United States? You know, so people don't know that. And it's so easy to start fostering. Or maybe if you can't foster, you can't bring cats and kittens into your home, have you thought about getting getting involved in TNR in your community. It's as simple as for many people, first of all, they they may not ever know that they have a TNR organization in their community. I always say just Google TNR cats and the city you live in and you'll be able to find it. Or you can call your local Humane Society or SPCA and ask them if you can borrow a trap and get those cats in your community in for spay and neuter. That's excellent. It's a great idea. It's really good to help bring TNR into the mainstream, which being in this business as long as I have, which has been since 1994, Mm -hmm. TNR is just in my blood. It's just part of who I am. Right. But that's not the norm in the general world. So it's good to bring it out. And, you know, Instagram is obviously a huge platform. And as you said, it blew up. You've got an audience there which is ready to learn. So that that's fantastic. So Nikki, can you tell me a little bit about your company, Fostering a Purpose? Fostering a Purpose started because I started having people ask me on my Instagram if I sold merchandise. My initial reaction was, no, I don't know why, why anyone would want merchandise. And then I started getting approached by people for me to sell their merchandise through my Instagram. And I would look at their products and I think I wouldn't use that. So I don't know why I would pitch it to anyone. I could see that there was a demand for things, but I wanted to also, if I was going to sell something, it was going to be high quality products, something that I would actually use. And it needed to have a purpose. 
So that's where Fostering a Purpose started. I started selling high quality products, pet themed apparel for people that I enjoyed wearing and always comfortable with that uh, had a purpose. So a portion of all our sales goes back to animal welfare and rescue. And that was another thing. Somebody would tell me to pitch their product and they'd give a portion of the sales to so-and-so welfare organization. And I didn't really know if they were doing anything to actually help animals. So now that I have Fostering a Purpose, I can give back to rescue and welfare organizations that I know for a fact are doing things, actively doing things to help animals in need. So uh, we now have a giving section on our website, fosteringapurpose.com, that you can look and see the organizations that we've given back to. I love it. It's a side business that we do that we can actually help give more to other organizations. I want to take a step back and uh, revisit Las Vegas and get your take on what you've seen happening over the last several years with regards to community cats in Las Vegas. Is life getting better for them? I love this subject because since the inception of C5 in 2009, which by the way, C5 was just started by a handful of people who didn't have any background in animal welfare, none at all. They just saw that there was a need There was a huge euthanasia rate in Las Vegas and that there was a need to help cats in the community. And they got together in 2009 and started C5, which is just a small nonprofit. And since the inception of C5 in Las Vegas, we have TNR'd over 35,000 cats. Oh, wow. That's awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. And because of the work that C5 is doing, the euthanasia rate for cats at the local municipal shelter has now gone down 90% since 2009. Hooray. Big yay. That's awesome. It's very successful. So TNR works. We see that as a hashtag on Instagram, but it actually does. It actually does work. Less cats being born on the street means less cats entering the municipal shelter, less cats being euthanized. So it is incredibly successful. And like I said, just started by a handful of concerned citizens that got together and started C5. Mm -hmm. They run it out of a two-car garage. (laughs) It's just a small, simple organization with volunteers making a huge impact in Las Vegas. It's great to hear. I love hearing stories about what's going on in other communities around the country because a lot of us feel like it's sometimes just, you know, a couple of organizations doing this and we're in this uphill battle. And there really are a ton of small organizations doing a lot of work and being really efficient, doing what moves the needle. That's sort of my theme for 2019 is what's going to move the needle the most. And this is obviously one of those things. It's a lot of work. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of work involved, but it also does make change happen pretty quickly too. Yeah, definitely. If folks are interested in finding out more about your work and also fostering a purpose, your website, how would they do that? So you can visit fosteringapurpose.com. You can also visit Instagram, my Instagram at my foster kittens, all one word. You can also check out C5 at c5-tnr.org for all information on what we're accomplishing here in Las Vegas for feral cats. And Nikki, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today? You know, I think the greatest thing that anyone can take away from this is that fostering absolutely saves lives, but TNR saves more. So if you even can trap, neuter, and return one cat in your community, think of the litters of kittens that won't be born because of the efforts you made. Something to look into. Borrow a trap from your local rescue or shelter and uh, get that cat trapped and in for spay and neuter. That's a great way to end the show. Nikki, I want to thank you so much for being a guest on my show today, and I hope we'll have you on again in the future. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to the Community Cats Podcast. I would really appreciate it if you would go to iTunes and leave a review of the show. It will help spread the word to help more community cats. 